Welcome to day one, shape and prep. The first thing we begin with is shaping. You may be wondering, why do I already have polish on my nails? We begin every tutorial with our old polish on because it's easier to shape when you have color on your nails. The whites of your nails can be uneven and kind of misleading, so by clipping with old polish on, you can really get a sense of that final shape. With shaping, we use the 90-10 rule. We use the clipper for the first 90% of the shape, and then we use the file for the last 10%. Most of the heavy lifting is gonna be done with this clipper. Our clipper is a flat edge clipper because it has, you guessed it, a flat edge. This makes it easy to clip into any shape you want. You won't be forced into a round shape like most of those clippers that have that semicircular tip. So go ahead and open up your clipper. When you're shaping your nails, it's always best to keep your hand as steady as possible. It's nice and even on a flat surface. And I like to clip into a round shape. It's great for beginners, it's nice and easy. And whenever you're shaping, remember, you can always clip more, but you can't put it back on, so go nice and slow. To create a round shape, create tiny little clips, working your way all around the tip of your nail, like so. And every once in a while, it's good to just check your perspective of your hand, make sure you're liking the way that you're shaping so far. Good to kind of come up for air every once in a while. We get questions all the time about what's the best nail shape for me, and the answer is whatever nail shape makes you happy. There are no rules. You don't have to match the line at your cuticle to whatever shape makes you the happiest. If you're brand new to shaping, we always say, just try to follow the natural shape, and then as you get more practice, you can try on different shapes like square or scroll or oval. Just give it a go. Okay, so I like where everything's going so far. So now I'm gonna use the file for the last 10%. This is our nail file. It is a dual grit nail file. It's called dual grit because it has two grits. For manis, we like to use the ampersand side. This is the softer grit. You can feel when you run your hands over it. With filing, same principles apply. Keep your hand nice and flat on the table. And the trick to filing is to move your file in one direction. Here's what I mean by that. Go for a file and then clear your hand completely before going to do the other side. Basically what you don't wanna do is saw your nails back and forth like this. That can cause shredding at the tip, which can give you peels later on, which we don't want. But remember, you're only using this file for the last 10%, so you don't wanna to try to do any major shape changes with the file. Basically what I'm doing here is just smoothing over all those clips that I made so that when I run my finger over the tip, it feels nice and smooth. Practice in poses, make sure you like where everything's going. Sometimes your shape can look a little different from a different angle, so to make sure everyone looks nice and even, just check it out. And don't worry if you don't get a perfect shape on your first try. For me, shaping is always the hardest part of any manicure and the part that sort of took the most practice, so be, be kind to yourself, go easy on yourself. You will be a shaping pro in no time. All right. So that is shaping. Once you've got the shape that you love, you're ready to start prepping your nails. So now we come to our best friend, the nail polish remover pot. This is a acetone-free formula, which we love because it's super gentle on your nails, but it's still really, really effective and efficient at taking off your polish. Just dunk your finger into the sponge, swirl it around a couple of times, and you can see your polish comes right off. You'll see we come back to this nail polish remover pot multiple times throughout the step of the mani, so this really is your best friend. Fun fact about this remover pot too is it has a little sponge in the cap. That's super helpful for taking off petties, so you can take off any polish on your toes without messing up your nails. Okay, now we're ready to work on our cuticles. You may notice that in any of our systems, we never include a cuticle nipper, and that's because we never recommend that you clip your own cuticles at home. Here is our cuticle method. We believe in training your cuticles so that they learn to lie flat and then they don't continue to grow. It's pretty amazing, but it really works. So what you wanna do is take your thumbnail and just gently push your cuticles back. We love using your thumb because you don't need an extra tool for it and it kind of puts you in control of your cuticle journey. I have a really good sense of how much pressure I'm applying here. This should never hurt, and I can be super gentle. And by pushing my cuticles back, they eventually learn that they should lie flat. 
Basically, if you keep up with this for a couple weeks, a couple months, you will have very little to push back every time you do a manicure. Once you've pushed all your cuticles back, you're gonna come to our buffer. I know before I started doing my own nails at home, I had no idea what a buffer even was, but this is a magical device because basically it erases your cuticle without needing to clip or cut, which is great. It's also wonderful at prepping your nail plate. Think about your nails like a canvas. You wouldn't just paint on a piece of canvas without prepping it, or you wouldn't just paint a wall without priming it. So I like to take the corner of the buffer, position it at the base of the nail, right where all that dead skin has kind of piled up from where I pushed it back. And I basically use this as an eraser and it just disappears. Again, be super gentle here. You never want to over buff and it should never hurt. Once you've buffed away your cuticles, I like to do a quick once over with the buffer all over the surface of my nail plate. If you have some light ridges, you can use the buffer to kind of smooth everything over, but never try to eliminate ridges completely. That can thin out your nails too much. Just a gentle buff is all you need. If you have any peels, especially they can happen at the tip of your nails, position your hand in a downward angle like this and buff down to smooth the peel away. You never want to buff it up to reveal it more. Okay, once your nails are buffed, this might be the stage where you're tempted to wash your hands, but trust us, washing your hands is the worst thing you could do. Washing your hands puts water into your nail plate, which can make your polish chip off later. No thank you. So here's what we do. This is the most important prep step. Come back to your best friend, the remover pot. Dip each nail back in that remover pot one more time. This eliminates any of that lingering dust, any oil or moisture that's left behind, and really preps your nails for a perfect polish application. All right, my friends, that is day one shape and prep done. Congratulations. We'll see you back for day two.